Item number, SCP-225. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-2251 is contained at Site-65 for study and experimentation. No guards are necessary for the object itself, as theft is impossible and the object is harmless for the moment. Ongoing tests are to be made to find a way to eliminate SCP-2251, or at least to find a way to move it from its position in a controllable fashion. SCP-2252 is as yet uncontainable and should be monitored as best as possible as it travels, with constant updates as to its current position, speed, and trajectory, along with projections as to its estimated position for the next 50 years. As of this writing, SCP-225 poses no immediate threat. However, in the event that a collision course with SCP-2251 is detected, SCP-225 is to be immediately upgraded to Keter, and every effort must be made to find a way to alter SCP-2251 or SCP-2252 from their courses. All Foundation resources are to be made available for this objective, should a collision ever become probable. Planetary evacuation plans are to be drawn up as a precaution, as are revised containment procedures for Keter-level items whose containment being compromised by data expunged would not also result in the item's imminent destruction. Description SCP-2251 and SCP-2252 are shiny gray metallic spheres of unknown origin and composition, each with a diameter of 0.681 meters. SCP-2251 appears stable and motionless, but is in fact moving in a geosynchronous path above Earth, at the exact speed of Earth's rotation, maintaining its relative position at all times. Gravity, magnetism, and all other forces tested have had no effect upon it. It maintains position approximately 7.3 meters above the surface. No amount of force brought to bear on it in any direction has any effect upon its position. All tools and weaponry tested have no effect upon it physically. SCP-2252 follows a path around the Sun that is nearly synchronous with Earth's. It does not orbit Earth. Earth rotates under it, giving it the illusory appearance of traveling around the Earth at velocities usually ranging from 1600 to 2000 km per hour, depending on its current relative altitude. It does not technically orbit the Sun either. It appears to be moving under its own power via unknown means. Its course has not been entirely predictable. Differences between SCP-2252's path and Earth's orbit move the planet closer to or further away from SCP-2252, within a surprisingly small level of variance to date. Since it was first observed in it has never reached a relative altitude of less than 10 kilometers, generally staying between kilometers and kilometers above the surface, though it has moved as far away as data expunged, resulting in a temporary loss of contact, contact re-established after the lunar impact incident. Similarly to SCP-2251, no force or weaponry brought to bear upon it has had any effect, though testing on it is significantly more difficult, time-consuming, and resource-intensive due to the variation in its relative position. Addendum to summarize, no effort to move or damage SCP-2251 has any effect, and no effort to stop or damage SCP-2252 has any effect. SCP-2252 destructively travels through any object in its path, without pause and or it pushes it out of the way, regardless of that object's composition. SCP-2251 is unaffected by any amount of force brought to bear on it in any direction. While individually each object is not as yet of any major concern, there are cataclysmic implications should the two objects collide. Projections based upon the estimated amount of material contained between the two objects, 0.33 cubic meters, or approximately 2,600 kilograms, show that should the objects annihilate each other, they would release at minimum the power of a gigaton nuclear explosion potentially much higher depending upon what they are constructed of. Since all tests thus far have shown that neither SCP-2251 nor SCP-2252 can be damaged or moved by any means known, the possibility also exists that neither object would be annihilated, halted, or altered from their course 
even by contact with the other. If this is true, then a collision between SCP-2251 and SCP-2252 has the potential to data expunged. In this circumstance, planetary evacuation may not be sufficient, and data expunged should time permit before data expunged. Item Number SCP-269 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-269 is stored in a standard Safe Class Secure Locker at Site-19. Experimentation with SCP-269 may only be performed on Class D personnel, and only with prior approval from at least two Level 3 senior researchers. Description SCP-269 is an unmarked bracelet composed of red jade, approximately 11 centimeters in diameter in its inactive state. SCP-269 exhibits unusual resilience, as all attempts at obtaining a sample have failed to date, as well as constantly maintaining a temperature of approximately 36 degrees Celsius, regardless of ambient room temperature. When placed on the wrist or ankle of a living human subject, SCP-269 contracts to fit tightly but comfortably over the extremity. Over the next 24 hours, SCP-269 extends flexible tendrils that integrate with its host's circulatory system through the ulnar and radial arteries, a process described by test subjects as being painless but mildly uncomfortable. Upon completion of this process, SCP-269 cannot be removed from its host without amputating the affected hand or foot. Once SCP-269 is fully integrated, it will begin to filter substances from its host's bloodstream. How this is done is not fully understood, but the process occurs over three stages. In the first stage, SCP-269 will begin to filter contaminants and infectious agents, such as bloodborne bacteria and viruses. This includes many disease agents that are currently incurable such as the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. SCP-269 appears to be capable of identifying and isolating infected blood cells from healthy ones. As this process often results in a general improvement in the health of the host, the host may resist attempts to have SCP-269 removed. This stage typically lasts anywhere from one week to one month. In the second stage, SCP-269 will begin filtering components of the host's immune system from the bloodstream. Because SCP-269 continues to filter infectious agents from the host's body, this generally goes unnoticed, unless a blood analysis is performed. Stage 2 lasts anywhere from one month to six months. In the final stage, SCP-269 will begin to filter vital blood components such as red blood cells and platelets, causing an onset of acute anemia and thrombocytopenia. Hosts that reach stage 3 quickly weaken and will invariably expire within one week unless massive blood transfusions are given. SCP-269 came to the Foundation's attention following reports that a civilian, one Mr. had been cured of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, and died shortly thereafter. SCP-269 was discovered attached to Mr. Wren's wrist and was secured by Foundation agents after it was found that SCP-269 had integrated into his circulatory system. Investigation into the precise function and origin of SCP-269 is ongoing. Item Number SCP-275 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Subject is to be contained within two 6 meter by 6 meter 20 foot by 20 foot subterranean cells. That is only accessible by a freestanding overhead elevator, although she is allowed short term access to the communal facilities contingent on good behavior, and is accompanied by no fewer than two operatives, all armed with gas grenades filled with an incapacitating agent. Personnel are not to assist SCP 275's self destructive behavior unless authorized by Level 4 personnel. Such behaviors are either potentially harmful to bystanders or pointless. Subject has requested one prayer rug, approved. One Koran, approved. Halal food, approved. 
to be allowed to perform a pilgrimage to Mecca. Denied. Daily portions of chili pepper of a minimum Scoville scale rating of 1 million. Approved. Contingent on good behavior. Regular haircuts. Approved. Hot coals. Denied. To be flogged. Denied. To be stabbed. Denied. To be beaten. Denied. To be shot. Denied. To be electrocuted. Denied. To be set on fire. Denied. Description. SCP-275 is a woman who cannot be physically damaged by any means available to the Foundation. Subject is of apparently Middle Eastern origin and claims to have grown up somewhere in the Ottoman Empire, but to have been a homeless orphan with no memories before the age of approximately 10. Subject claims to be 168 years of age, despite appearing to be in her mid-30s. Subject is 1.63 meters or 5 foot 4 inches tall and weighs 190 kilograms or 419 pounds, again despite having an appropriate and healthy sized figure. Hair and eyes are brown. She speaks most languages of the Middle East fluently and speaks English with a mild accent. SCP-275 is perfectly normal in the fact that she needs to breathe, eat, and sleep. However, Subject is almost completely resistant to physical trauma, various forms of radiation, and extreme temperatures. By SCP-275's own recollection, her flesh has never experienced any damage, and her skin has never been pierced or scratched. Testing indicates that the majority of SCP-275's mass is composed of the elements common to all organic life. However, it is currently believed that many of the structural compounds have been replaced with significantly more durable substitutes, and the subject's tissues also appear to contain significantly elevated amounts of various heavy metals. Foundation researchers have thus far been unable to collect tissue samples. Attempts have been made to x-ray the subject, but results were inconclusive. Subject's skin contains significant quantities of radio-opaque elements, repelling most attempts to penetrate it with radiological or electromagnetic means. Diffractometry tests upon cell samples extracted from urine, feces, and menses indicate the presence of several novel polymers. However, the degree to which these polymers are represented in other tissues is speculative at best. This impenetrability of the subject extends through the entirety of the subject, including her hair and nails. Subject has claimed that her hair and nails have not been properly cut since she was 14, just before her condition manifested itself. In Foundation custody, her hair is to be cut by weekly exposure to a watt laser, and her fingernails and toenails are to be abraded with an angle grinder on a bi-weekly basis. In addition to this, due to her physical makeup and density, her biology has been slowed as well. Subject ages at least a fourth of the normal rate of aging. Also, her menstrual cycle is approximately six months long, with menses itself generally lasting for three to four weeks. SCP-275's mental state has been described by Dr. Glass as worrying, because her anomalous condition prevents her from experiencing most forms of sensation. She indulges in self-destructive behavior in an effort to perceive tactile stimuli. Item number, SCP-279. Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures There is no known way of inhibiting SCP-279's movements. As SCP-279 has not yet been sighted outside of its host town, D, the city has been placed under a level lockdown. No media regarding SCP-279 are permitted to leave the town. If at all possible, the civilians are to be kept unaware of the anomalous properties of SCP-279, as well as the fact that their city is being monitored. A minimum of two agents are to follow SCP-279's movements as closely as they are able. Description: SCP-279 appears to be a man in his early 40s, of unremarkable appearance and dress. SCP-279 does not respond to any form of external stimuli and has not been observed to deviate from a standard neutral expression. SCP-279 has been reported to spontaneously disappear and reappear throughout D 
presenting unusual difficulties to agents required to monitor it. SCP-279 seemingly spends the majority of its time time-traveling through the town of D. Attempts to eliminate SCP-279 have failed. SCP-279 continues whatever it is in the process of doing regardless of any injury it has sustained. Small portions of SCP-279 attempt to continue locomotion even when separated from the whole. In light of this, attempts to dispatch SCP-279 have been indefinitely postponed. All samples taken confirm that SCP-279 is human. At approximately 3 a.m., SCP-279 vanishes for two hours and returns in its original state at another location in D. Containment or restraint is impossible, as SCP-279 possesses an inordinate amount of strength when physically restrained, and has utilized its ability to spontaneously reappear in a different location when indirectly restrained. Although SCP-279 has no known motive, it does not have a known history of violent behavior. SCP-279 has been observed standing in unusual areas for up to several days at a time, looking into windows of occupied rooms, walking in a circle roughly two meters in diameter for several hours, data expunged in houses, entering shops and shop manager informed local authorities after three minutes, walking along roads, etc. Care must be taken to avoid direct skin contact with SCP-279. When such contact is made, the person in question will vanish, along with SCP-279, at the usual time of disappearance. Only one individual has been recovered after direct contact with SCP-279. Said individual appeared to be in a state of near catatonic shock upon recovery in a basement. After being relocated to site the subject showed signs of being legally blind, despite examinations proving vision was only slightly farsighted. Subject appeared to be reasonably lucid despite showing signs of mental data expunged. Reported saying, get away from me repeatedly while data expunged. However, does not satisfactorily explain the injuries the subject incurred while confined to a straitjacket in a padded room. Addendum 279A Agents monitoring SCP-279 have brought to our attention a problematic development. While in the past, information leaks were secured easily due to the fact that SCP-279 rarely appeared near large crowds, it has recently been frequenting densely populated areas. More conspicuously odd actions have also been noted, although this may be due to the fact that more people are reporting unusual events surrounding SCP-279. Despite our best efforts, SCP-279 has since become something of a landmark of the town due to its open, unusual behavior. Liberal amounts of amnestics were administered when citizens noticed connections between missing individuals and SCP-279. Violence directed towards SCP-279 attracted large amounts of attention and resulted in an immense security breach before agents were able to arrive. Currently, Efforts are being made to maintain security without upsetting the population of D. However, if fails, the city is to be put under a level lockdown. Attempts to maintain any pretense that D is not being closely monitored will be discontinued. As it is a relatively small town, the process of data expunged ought to go smoothly. Dr. Level 5 security clearance required. Recently. A researcher noticed an odd distortion in a picture of SCP-279. After considerable concentration, the doctor was able to see a similar distortion in all files depicting SCP-279. Said doctor then discovered an effective method of an extremely elaborate and convoluted process, and after considerable time, he was able to achieve the desired effect. An extremely subtle mimetic hazard had affected SCP-279 and nearly all examinations it was involved in. Since then, SCP-279 has been confirmed to be decidedly not human. DNA retesting is impossible due to the nature of SCP-279. Testing confirmed that agents claimed to be grasping SCP-279's arm when, as viewed with the aid of said doctor's methods, the agent's arm appeared to be data expunged up to the elbow in Researchers were reminded that despite the admittedly unsavory aspects of allowing it to interact with civilians, 
Data expunged. Use of Foundation resources. Coupled with the fact that very little is known of SCP-279's motives, requests to evacuate D have been denied. Researchers are reminded to maintain a professional calm. As per mutual agreement, the containment procedures regarding SCP-279 have been updated. Agents tasked with monitoring SCP-279 have not been informed of its nature, as the information was deemed to be too distressing. Item Number SCP-313 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-313 is to be kept unmounted and disconnected when not being tested. Access is strictly prohibited, except with special permission from a Level 4 official. Under no circumstances are personnel to press the button, save for officially sanctioned testing under rigidly controlled conditions. Description: SCP-313 is identical in appearance and marking to a World Dryer Corp Model A electric hand dryer. The object measures 25 cm by 24 cm by 21 cm. Its casing is painted white steel with a polished stainless steel nozzle and button. Internal workings are consistent with Model A specifications. However, despite this veneer of normalcy, SCP-313 has two significantly anomalous qualities. First and foremost, it is utterly indestructible and impervious to all forces available to us. And secondly, it is extraordinarily destructive, apparently by design. Destruction test logs are available on request to those with level 2 or higher security clearance. The second anomalous property should be considered armed. When SCP-313 is mounted on a wall and connected to a dedicated 20 amp power source, under these conditions, each push of the button represents a 1.5% chance that this property will activate. When this occurs, SCP-313 will begin to emit a stream of superheated plasma, which originates somewhere within the object, and exits from the nozzle in a direction perpendicular to the surface on which the object is mounted. The stream's force and temperature increase exponentially until the object tears loose from its mounting and or propels itself through the mounted surface. Temperatures of over 25,000 Kelvin and forces as great as 650 kilonewtons have been recorded, although thrust of this magnitude would never occur under normal circumstances. The flow of plasma will continue for up to 30 seconds after the object is torn free, i.e., the normal duration of airflow for a standard Model A, generally enough to propel the object an enormous distance if there is nothing in the way, or cause it to ricochet at high speed inside any structure in which the object is confined, potentially demolishing the structure. This destruction is compounded by the effects of extremely high temperatures. Both the civilian casualties and property damage attributable to SCP-313 are staggering. It has caused a number of fires and other disasters over the years, generally in a predictable pattern of being sold and installed blasting halfway across the country and being found and resold. The object passed into Foundation hands when it impacted near Site 5, having been mistaken for a meteorite. Addendum 313A Some of the lower level personnel have been pestering me about our safety procedures when using SCP-313. For those of you who have forgotten high school physics, 25,000 Kelvin is over four times hotter than the surface of the sun and 650 kilonewtons is roughly enough force to lift an M1 Abrams main battle tank. Now, imagine that much force behind this object, which weighs less than 10 kilograms. Remember, F equals MA, and is indestructible. Dr. Sundstrom, Supervisor 3401, Site 19. Item Number SCP-388 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-388 is to be kept in a locked safe in a room guarded by at least two armed guards, instructed to refuse access to any unauthorized personnel. Use of lethal force is permitted to this end. Unless undergoing experimentation, 
SCP-388 is to remain outside the influence of any other SCPs demonstrating properties capable of modifying physical laws or drawing energy from unknown sources. Description SCP-388 consists of a foldable nylon frisbee of the type commonly given away as promotional material, in this case, bearing the logo of the banana boat Suntan Lotion Corporation. SCP-388 appears to be immune to damage. During testing, it has been able to withstand high-caliber rifle shots, immersion in high-acidity baths, and sustained temperatures of 3,500 degrees Celsius. In all cases, it would spring back, unharmed, to its original shape. X-ray crystallography reveals the molecular structure of SCP-388 to be completely normal nylon, supported by a ring of metal appearing to be aluminum. SCP-388 was discovered after witnesses in a local news report in the town of claimed a power line was downed by a UFO. Agents embedded with maintenance crews investigated and found the concrete pole was sliced cleanly with no tool marks, prompting full investigation status. Aerial records obtained from NORAD revealed no abnormalities as data expunged, typically associated with data expunged. The investigation was nearly terminated until agents posing as reporters interviewed the family, originally questioned in the news report, and their child mentioned the entire incident as being caused by a frisbee. Initially skeptical, Efforts were nonetheless taken to verify this claim, with initial confirmation made on data expunged. A full week of helicopter searches of a neighboring city, and numerous retrievals of unremarkable frisbees from rooftops eventually yielded results. Unfortunately, Agent was fatally dismembered by SCP-388 when Agent threw the object down from the roof. Under the guise of replacing a septic tank, SCP-388 was dug up from its resting place 5.5 meters below the yard and carefully brought in for containment. SCP-388, when thrown by a human, appears to travel as a normal frisbee would for a distance of approximately 3 meters. After this distance, SCP-388 immediately begins glowing bright white and accelerates until its velocity reaches approximately meters per second. SCP-388 will proceed to cleanly slice through all intervening matter, regardless of consistency, until eventually coming to rest. Current theory holds that it loses speed due to friction between its top and bottom surfaces and the weight of material pressing down on it as it passes through objects. SCP-388 does not differentiate between matter and test subjects assigned to catch it. Addendum Inquiries into the potential use of SCP-388 as a weapon have been declined in light of the obvious difficulty of retrieving it after its first throw. Item Number SCP-389 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-389 requires no exceptional containment. When not in use, it is stored on a shelf in the office of Dr. at site due to the site's proximity to the sea. Description SCP-389 is a green glass bottle, approximately 45 centimeters in length. There are no markings or other distinguishing features on it. SCP-389 appears highly resistant to damage, having been dropped or knocked from its shelf multiple times with no fractures, chips, or other damage. Analysis of the material it is made of show it to be identical to normal glass. Object was discovered on data expunged, in the possession of a 15-year-old girl named She shared the history of the object as she knew it, which was, she discovered it on the beach approximately six years ago. On a whim, she composed a note, placed it inside SCP-389, and threw the object into the sea. Several days later, she returned to find SCP-389 washed up on shore with a reply enclosed. She had been corresponding with another person this way ever since this discovery. Upon testing, it was discovered that this phenomenon appears to work with any note, and after being cast into the sea, would return at high tide the following day, containing a letter. A test consisting of sending the bottle without a note ended with the discovery of the still-empty bottle the next day. 
Messages received are written in English and appear to have been produced with a mechanical typewriter. The composer of the letters seems loath to reveal any personal details beyond her name, Gedril, and sex. Any questions about or requests for her geographic location are ignored. Gedril will describe the area surrounding her home, wildlife, food, culture, customs, and apparently anything not relating specifically to herself readily and in detail when possible, though her knowledge of many things is limited. Many of the things described are unusual. Among them are trees that uproot themselves and migrate, and the life cycle of insects physically resembling coccinellidae, colloquially known as ladybugs, which at one point includes multiple larval members of the species gathering, spontaneously liquefying into a single mass, then reforming again as adults. Tracking devices sent along with SCP-389, regardless of whether they are contained within it or simply affixed to its outside, invariably fail after SCP-389 is beyond approximately 100 meters from the shore. All other attempts to track SCP-389 have likewise resulted in failure. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.